What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. I have a quick video for you this week and it's five programming hacks for new developers. So if you're new to the industry or you're trying to break in, these five tips will help you level up faster. Let's get started. Number one, don't rush into writing code. So in your standup or your meeting with the client, you just got the green light to go ahead with a new feature. And you think, I've done this before, or I know exactly where to get started. And you run, you open VS Code, and you start coding away. What you're doing here is you're coding while still thinking it through. You haven't even thought it through yet. You're processing what to do while at the same time executing on that thinking in the form of coding. This is more times than not wrong, and it will lead you having to go back and redo things. Instead, Instead, grab a notebook or open up a notes app and give it some thought on one, how you should break this up, two, how does this feature fit within the larger code base or flow of the application, and three, put a game plan together first and then execute on it. You'd be surprised at how much more mature and methodical your code will look and how it will function within the broader scope of the application. Number two, don't always accept the task at face value. I say this a lot, but you often need to push back. Your job isn't just to code and build things, it's to also decide if that thing needs further consideration or even needs to be built at all. Remember that the customer is often not technical. They're thinking based on looks and feel only. Often the features they request aren't doable or they aren't wise to implement or they need some serious modification based on your expertise. Remember that expertise is part of your job. They need your advice in addition to your coding skills. Number three, don't get caught up in languages. Now I need to be careful here because you need to learn a language up front and also certain languages match certain scenarios. Like you wouldn't want to build a mobile app with Python. It's just not designed for that. But if you work alongside of senior developers or seasoned developers, you'll notice that while they do of course have preferences, they're not hindered by having to use multiple languages. They can adapt regardless if they have experience in it or not. This is because they understand concepts. They're conceptual. They know variables and loops and functions and objects. And all it takes is just to reference the syntax of that language to be successful. It may take them longer to get it, but it won't be a hindrance to them. They'll just adapt because they aren't married to a language. They're conceptual. You need to be conceptual as well. Four, always think about how your code will look down the road. Uncleaned code can ruin a code base. As that code base grows, it needs refactoring to keep it readable and maintainable. Even small hobby apps should get this treatment, and it provides a good practice for doing so. Examples might include, this code is repeatable, maybe I should move it into a function. Or, I don't even remember what this comment means. Let me figure it out and rewrite it. Or, maybe I should put this 200 line long function into its own file and just reference it. Sure, it's important to get things up and running first instead of making it pretty. I agree with that 100%, but just take some time to clean up every now and then. And number five, break down big tasks into smaller chunks. Let's say you're tasked with implementing an events manager functionality on the site. You think, oh my goodness, that's massive, an events manager? There's so many moving parts, but not really. You should break it down and work on it in chunks. So first, what pieces would you need? Well, you need the event itself with properties like the start date, the location, etc., and maybe some methods like create event, delete event. Knock that part out first. Create that object. Next, let's say there's payments. Build that out, integrate the Stripe package, and maybe now create an event ticket object where you can purchase events. And then next, maybe think of the front end. How will this look on the website? How can you allow the user to call your functions that you just created and interact with that event and that event ticket? And then finally, worry about the nuances, like what if the ticket gets canceled? How do we set a limited number of tickets, etc. The point is to break it down to build it out. Break the larger tasks down into subtasks instead of working on it as a whole. So to recap, number one, don't rush into writing code. Number two, don't always accept the task at face value. Push back if you have to. Number three, don't get caught up in languages, be conceptual. Number four, always think about how that code will look down the road or how that code will read down the road. And then five, break down big tasks into chunks and work on them in chunks. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.